Néztek ez a bej? Néztek ez a bej presentation? And then, uh, if you want, a uh, question time. Thank you. Thank you. To finally kill you. <laughs> I have uh, a five hour presentation <laughs> on uh, institutional philanthropy in Italy, challenge and opportunities. Benadino, excuse me. No worries, I will be fast. Okay, the philanthropic sector in Italy. Until uh, 20 years ago, Institutional philanthropy was almost unknown in Italy, and therefore Marino Golinelli has to go to the States to identify a model to apply in Italy. Suddenly, with the privatization of the savings banks, I think we have seen this uh, afternoon, we have the huge philanthropic sector with no philanthropists. <laughs> because there was no philanthropists. And uh, uh, one has to be aware that there is a suspicious attitude uh, toward philanthropy in Italy. There are a number of people uh, that uh, sometimes consider philanthropy as a danger for democracy and social equality, because they feel this should be the duty of the state, not some personal people that decide what is good and what is bad. But uh, since... Uh, 10 years, uh, we had a real growth and diversification of the field in Italy. We had more and more corporate foundations that were not just uh, um, operating structure, cultural institution to keep the archive uh, of the company, but more and more grant making institution. There are a greater number of family foundations that is somehow difficult, you know, than most of the uh, Italy, uh, company Italy is privately owned, so it's corporate and family is difficult to find out who is who. And then we have the establishment and the growth of community foundation. Last year, a global status report of community foundation, Italy is the third country for uh, endowment of community foundation. We are working in England. We are going to go behind in the future, but then <laughs> for, the, for that time, we were the third after uh, uh, US, uh, US and Canada. Uh, and, as a matter of fact, the crisis of the welfare state uh, creates some quite huge opportunities, but also some risk. And uh, from one side, we have this idea that we need to develop uh, the welfare society, the British will call the big society. Uh, and this uh, uh, means uh, a recognition of the public role of the charitable sector. It's not something uh, just private, but as a public role. But at the same time, uh, uh, there is a danger that people may try to use it in an instrumental way just to deal with the government cut. Uh, uh, the, the fact that the public spending is uh, being cutting means that the public, there is a greater public attention for institutional philanthropy. And so we can uh, go in the parliament, we can talk with the government, we, we have more opportunities than before to express uh, who we are, but at the same time, uh, you know, maybe our in the interest for the work of philanthropy is just the interest of the money of philanthropy. And this can be uh, not exactly what we want to see. So, we need to identify strategies for philanthropy. Okay, one way is to try to distinguish the role of philanthropy from the role of the public sector. Difficult, I would say impossible to do. Uh, things are moving very fast and you cannot really put some barrier. This is the role of philanthropy, this is the role of the state. It doesn't work. One uh, strategy is to concentrate on research uh, and uh, experimentation. But uh, it's somehow complicated to replicate and to scale up what has been uh, identified, even the best practice, very often stays there. It's difficult to find a way to develop. My personal view is that uh, the role of philanthropy is to promote the effectiveness of the non-profit sector, or I would even the charitable sector I prefer to use. But what does effective mean? And this, I think, is the most crucial point we need, uh, we need to deal. 
because uh, very often we think uh, of effectiveness as the production of uh, goods and services. Uh, but I feel uh, this is not going to be the right solution. It's not going to be the right solution, first of all, because uh, we end up maybe losing the real value added of, of uh, the charitable sector to make it uh, a, a profit sector with lower, with less money, with no profit, so simply with less money, or a government sector, no government sector, with less authority, with less guarantees. And this is, uh, and at the end, uh, we may end up uh, not having uh, uh, to destroy the identity of the sector itself and ending up with less product and service that we have in the meantime. So this is the real question, what uh, we need to ask as a philanthropic sector. What is the specific value added of charities? My personal feeling is that uh, what the uh, charitable sector can uh, create is, first of all, trust social capital. And we know, and, uh, <coughs> even from the presentation just before, how social capital can be important for the economic growth, for the international competitiveness of a community. So without this, uh, and uh, the private sector is not very able to create social capital. The government sector either, they can never, they, they are not really good in this. And the charitable sector could be a very good element in this. The other very important element, in my understanding, is to allow citizens to really contribute, to really be citizens. Very often in our society, <coughs> citizens are taxpayers or uh, uh, voters, uh, not citizens. Citizens are something else. And through the charitable sector, each of us can really give his own contribution to the common good, and this is to be citizens. And this is, the charitable sector can play a very important role in, uh, in this direction. But if it was just doing something for the community, for something for the economy, for something for the politics, then doing this charitable activity would be kind of a, a, a voluntary taxation. Uh, and people usually do not like too much to pay taxes, even if they're voluntary. <laughs> so we really need to think how this sector can help each of us. And I think there are three very important elements that the charitable sector can provide to every person. That our society is not able to provide the right answer. First of all, to give a meaning to our own experience. This is a very deep need, a deep rooted in the human being, and uh, just making money does not work. I mean, it's not, doesn't really give us a meaning. The second very important element is to establish human relationship with the other. We live uh, in a society that culturally is based on the hopes, assumption that the other are obstacle or means. And if the other are obstacle or means, you cannot really build up a good relationship. You, as an instrumental relationship, nothing more. And third, is to prove authentic emotion. The pleasure, Mr. Gonelli will say the pleasure of staying among the kids in the picture there. And this is, and we all bloody need those emotions. <laughs> uh, everybody, uh, you, you, it's enough to look at the uh, advertisement. They do not sell you product, they sell emotion. That is just uh, not real, but still they know that this is what every people need. And instead the charitable sector can provide real emotion and usually do not sell them, do not provide them. They are quiet. They are afraid of communicating this. If this is the right approach, then we need a new set of indicators. We don't need to know how many uh, um, food packages have been distributed, how many beds have been created, or many cells. We need something else. We need to understand how the activity is promoting trust, it's promoting collaboration, it motivates participants, in which way it is increasing civic responsibility. How is helping people to give and to really express their humanity? I much prefer a product that is failing in uh, providing the service but is creating a community than a product that is creating the best service but doesn't create the community. Because then it's not sustainable. It will fall apart quite quickly. So, in my understanding, the real challenge of philanthropy 
is to help the charitable sector <coughs> not so much to solve society problems. There will always be problems. We are going to die anyway. <laughs> but to make our community more human. Because this is a duty that neither the free market nor the public administration are able to perform, but it's something that we really need. OK, so just two words about Asifero. We claim to be the reference point of institutional financial in Italy. We assist grant makers and those wishing to make grants. We have uh, 62 members. There is more, but we have tripled in uh, the last two years. And so if you want more information there, thank you for your attention.